Welcome to Connected Knowledge, the podcast from Upland Software. My name is Pete Wright, and I am joined today by Dennis Francoeur, Senior Product Manager for Ingenious Products. Welcome, Dennis, to the show. Thanks so much, Pete, for having me. We are, are going to talk about uh, Ingenious and how it relates to enhancing customer experience through a personalized call center today. I feel like we need to go back in time before we dig into the today part, though, right? Like, how far do we need to go back? 1990, 2000? And, and explore what it was like living in a call center back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess we want to want to look at it from both uh, the the call center agent and also the uh, end customer perspectives, uh, you know, when we think about these things. Uh, if we think about, you know, the age where we weren't, you know, trying to communicate through things where we could also see video and, yeah. and it was strictly voice and, you know, all of these things. Um, it, it's really, you know, about how much extra information can can we get to know about a person? Um, you know, if we think back, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's the 90s, uh, maybe even late 80s, where, you know, call display was like a, a new and cool thing. And you could get a phone call and you could see the number that was coming up. And maybe, just maybe, you had a name that associated with it. And that was pretty awesome because you knew who it was calling and you could decide whether or not to answer the phone, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> am I home or am I not home? Uh, you know, <laughs> but... You know, those are the kinds of things that we, that's what we came from. That was the first version of personalization in, in any kind of a call experience is where you had some semblance of knowledge who, who was coming from the other side. Um, and, and you can make decisions and say things that might be different depending on who that is. Um, so, you know, that that's really the first part. And then, you know, that experience of having the person on the other end know who's calling uh, before uh, they pick up is also interesting to me as the caller. Uh, mm -hmm. Because then, you know, if it, I was calling my mother and she knew it was me, then, you know, she's going to answer the phone differently than if it was she thought it might be a telemarketer uh, or something like that. Right. So all of those kinds of experiences make me feel different as as a person who's doing the calling as well. Sure. Ne never is there a, a more salient example than the relationship of caller ID with mothers everywhere. Really, <laughs> is what, is what we're That's right. Then I think they were also probably the first ones to figure out how to block their number so their kids can answer the phone. One hundred percent. Okay. So then let's transition a little bit to uh, to how things have evolved over time and how we get to a quote better customer uh, call center experience. Absolutely. I mean, if we think about, you know, the, the things that have really changed, uh, you know, the computerization of everything and the fact that, you know, so much of our data is stored in different places. I mean, it used to be stored on pen and paper in somebody's drawer. And then, you know, it got into a computer on maybe a spreadsheet or some kind of rudimentary database. Um, and then now we're into the cloud and things are very fast and dynamic. And maybe there's things that can, you know, help uh, with pulling up this information in a timely fashion. Um, you know, that's what we're kind of fast forwarding to. And when, when we think of personalization, I, I think we kind of think of... Um, there, there, I'm going to say there's two stages, and, and those two stages would be kind of the, the the functional requirements of personalization. And what that means is I need to have uh, information about the call as the call center person or operator. I need to have the information about the uh, customer in my system so that I can actually you know access it and and, and look it up. So pulling in uh, information from potentially diff different and disparate systems uh, into a single pane of glass is is one piece of thing. And the more of that I have, the better I can make choices. The be more I can customize that customer experience. Um, also, from from the computerization standpoint, it's the fact that you know more and more uh, these phone calls are happening over. Uh, I'm going to say slightly less um, wires and 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 you know and and, and knobs kind of uh, environments, right? There's the ability to like tap the phone in. calls are less phony. Uh, the, uh, That's the, right. There's the ability to 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 tap into these uh, to these environments uh, and to really pull. I'm going to say. Um, very deep information uh, out. And it could be things beyond just a simple phone number and name. Uh, and what that means is we can, you know, pull in things like, okay, you know, uh, you think of a business and I might have more than one incoming phone number. 
Uh, it might be that I have, I'm a call center that services five different products and I do product support for them. And what phone number the person called is important to me to know what call, what product it is that they're looking for support with. So I can collect that information. I could uh, pull all of that stuff together. And when the phone uh, rings and as an agent, I can get something on my screen that pops up that, you know, the, the person is calling is Jane Smith and she's calling about product uh, Y. And then, you know, I know uh, perhaps that uh, Jane has called uh, three times in the last week about the same product. And she has two ongoing cases uh, that, you know, maybe she's calling about that or maybe it's calling about another thing. Mm -hmm. And so all of that, just in a, in a quick snapshot, I, I can now know. So when I answer the phone, I can say, thank you for calling product Y. Uh, my name is Dennis. Uh, how can I help you today, Jane? Mm -hmm. And that's the first part of your, your personalization. And I don't sure. have the context, I might say. And she's like, oh, I'm calling in because I, I have a case. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can see you have two cases here. Is it this one or this one? And again, it's just, I'm not asking her to explain all of the things. I don't have to, you know, okay, can you give me the case number while I look that up? Or worse, um, you know, mm -hmm. we think about what going back, dialing back to those you know, early days uh, and, and for people even currently who don't have, uh, you know, the more the pieces in place to do the personalized experience. Um, you're going to start with something like, Hi, thank you for calling product Y. My name is Dennis. Can I get your name, please? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to tell me your name. And then I'm going to try and type it in. And I'm going to probably misspell it. And then I'm going to say, uh, can, can you spell that, please? And then you're going to spell it. And I'm going to look it up. And then I'm going to, I can't find it under that name. Would there be another name that it might be under? And we go through this process. Yeah. Uh, not only does that take a long time, uh, thereby, thereby reducing the agent productivity. Uh, we're, we're talking about that's just really annoying for a customer. <laughs> and, yeah, well, uh, and, and not even to, I mean, you're not even getting to the point where that first level agent realizes they can't solve the problem and has to transfer me to somebody else. And I exactly. have to do it all again. That I know. And, that, and that's a big day. part of it. Yeah. Yes. And that, and that's really it, right? So you, you, there's the, what, what pieces, what building blocks do you have in place to make that a, a good experience for all right. involved? Right. You know, how do we get you to transfer from agent A to agent B without having to start from square one? And, sure. and that's really a, a big part of the value that things like CTI integrations bring because they can help you know, bridge that gap and make it so that you don't have to repeat everything. You can pick up on step six because that's where you left off with agent sure. one um, and, and away you go. Uh, so yeah, definitely th those are the big pieces. And then there's kind of, you know, the, I'm going to say the aspirational side of personalization, uh, which is, you know, you have those fundamentals. That's your, your, your really good, basic, individualized experience. I know stuff about you, mm -hmm. but what can I do beyond that? Well, maybe I know that you actually prefer, um, you know, digital communication because out of the last uh, 20 interactions we've had as a customer of ours, 19 of those have been digital. And this is the first time you've ever phoned in. Oh, well, maybe something's really wrong. Yeah. Uh, and maybe I need to, you know, because that's not the normal way you engage us. So maybe I need to treat that differently. Um, uh, or maybe we could start to learn that these are the kinds of channels that the person prefers. So if I'm going to send as a business, maybe I'm a retailer and I want to send some marketing communications to somebody, maybe I'm going to send it via the channel they prefer to use, um, you know, those kinds of things. And it's like, Hey, I can take this and I can start tailoring the, the, the way my business functions around the personalized experience of the end customer to make it of high value to them. And they're for high value to me. There is a, a really valuable number in there, which it, that it applies both to the organization, the call center, and the customer. That's customer satisfaction. When I call and get a, a, the experience that I'm calling a single brain that knows my entire relationship with the organization, I can get things done faster and frankly, get off the call faster because I don't generally want to be on the phone with the organization all the time. That's not my ideal. But I, I have to imagine putting all these pieces in place uh, improve the relationship 
for the call center staff. I I, I was in uh, I was in college in the in the early nineties, and I had a buddy who was an out my roommate. Actually, he was an outbound call center person. He was he was like the a debt collector, right? He'd get he'd go mm. into work and he'd get a sheet and he'd have to make phone calls. And I'll never forget the day he came back, ordered a pizza, and sat down to play video games. I said, "What's going on?" He said, "Well, I got the sheet of people I needed to call today, and my name was on it, so I left." <laughs> So I, I feel like that is a uh, that leads to solving one of the great problems of of working in a call center, which is absenteeism, which is keeping people in their seats. And if you give them the tools to feel like they're solving more problems, I have to imagine that that employee satisfaction goes up and, and helps the overall organization. Am I just fishing here? Is that a real uh, relationship? No, a- absolutely. I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, work been done and studies have been done to kind of, you know, demonstrate that if you make your uh, employees happy, your customers are happier. And that's totally true across all industries, uh, but particularly in the, the custo- anything that, you know, surfaces customer experience, whether it's call center or otherwise, um, you know, I, I personally have worked in a call center. Mine was inbound. I was doing support for software mm-hmm. products uh, and it was important. But I have been that person asking, uh, can I get your name, please? OK, how do right. you spell that? Uh, can you spell it again, please? <laughs> you know, because yeah. I didn't have this kind of uh, technological infrastructure in place to be able to kind of make that a, a seamless process. Um you know, the transferring required me to to pass things over and, and do a warm handover with mm-hmm. my, you know, second agent that I was going to be, be transferring it to because there I had no other tools to get that info info over. Right. People always asking me, you know, kind of what 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 is it that uh you know what do you what do you do? Uh, you know, and what what does your product do? I don't I don't yeah. really understand what this is because you know CTI it's kind of a you know an acronym computer telephone integration. I'm like okay, well what does that mean? And I always yeah. tell people it's like well think about you know you you call up and you you want to get uh, you know you want to order that pizza that your your buddy ordered sure. and uh, you know you, you call up and you know, anybody who's been around for a little while will start to you know they'll either build a relationship with their pizza place uh, you know old school uh, or there's a faster way to do it which is to have this information so you know if i call up for a pizza uh, they have a pop up on their screen oh it's dennis calling for pizza again the last three times he's ordered he'd ordered the exact same thing every single time and i know his delivery address and i know so i don't have to ask him any of that stuff so you can just take the order confirm that it's the same as the last time say yeah it's for delivery still at blah 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 and away we go and that's a great experience but it's also great for agents because there's nothing more annoying than having to ask the same customer that they've talked to 20 times the same questions over and over again that is really um you know there's a reason call centers are high turnover um is that it needs to be easy uh and and you know That actually kind of brings in another piece, which is whether we're talking about consumers to business kind of communications or business to business, because they're not the same. Um, Obviously, you know, any business person is also a consumer at some points in their life, but they do function a bit differently, particularly when communicating back and forth. And uh, there's maybe different expectations um, or different ways, although some similarities, I'm sure, too. The biggest thing that we have found is that our customers want business to be easy to do with us. They want it to be easy to do. It, it's it's okay if it takes a little long, if it doesn't, it's not the fastest thing on earth. What they want is for it to be easy to do business with us. Uh, we should be prepared, have our duckies in a row. We should be able to, you know, give them what they need and anticipate their needs. And over communication is always better than not enough. Uh, all of these kinds of things. Uh, well, and, this is and what they, those... we talk all the time about it. We talk about like e- even businesses want the quote Amazon experience. They want it as easy yeah. as buying stuff personally uh, on Amazon. They want to be able to do that with their business. A- absolutely, absolutely. And so you know that's that's kind of where this personalization comes in, and and to know that what those 
personal steps mean? It, you know, it could be something as simple as I'm, you know, going to invoice a customer for something, but I know that this particular customer needs a purchase order and that there's a, they have a, a, a procurement department that requires these three pieces of info. And so therefore I can make it easy for my customer to do business by just saying, yeah, their procurement process requires these three pieces of info and I need to send that over. So I can get that without having to do the back and forth and back and forth and back and forth sure. because I'm prepared and I'm organized and I can just pull all that up in a moment's notice. They say, oh, I need, you know, 200 more licenses for your software. Okay, let me help you out. And away we go. Let's transition a little bit. We wouldn't be talking about all of this stuff, about all, putting all these pieces in place if you didn't have uh, something worth talking about. So we've got uh, this, this product, Upland Ingenious. Let's talk about how Ingenious helps you put all those pieces in, in place to to improve everything we've been talking about today. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm very proud to say that, you know, we have a, a fantastic product uh, in that we are <laughs> colloquially called the glue between the two. Uh, we take two completely disparate systems uh, and, and stick them together in a meaningful way. Uh, and, and really, that's kind of at the crux of it. We have organizations uh, around the world who've spent, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on their telephony infrastructure. And as much as everything in the world is transitioning to the cloud, um, you know, th some things don't change as fast as others, uh, and especially if it's working. Uh, and so, you know, being able to take this stuff and bring it in to leverage some of those modern uh, technologies and, and sort of the extra wins that you get from being able to, uh, you know, computerize the, the, the agent and, and, and customer experience, even though it's still through voice, uh, to be able to serve information in a, in a timely fashion that's accurate um, is important. Being able to uh, report on and to uh, identify what it is that agents are doing on a daily day basis. How long are they spending on break? How long are they on the phone call? Uh, do they spend a lot of time on hold because that's not good for the agent or for the customer? All of these things are important data points that help make call centers uh, make better decisions and improve their training and customer experience. Um, and so, you know, we, we, you know, hook up, uh, you know, phone systems uh, like Avaya, Cisco, Genesis, Asterisk, uh, and be able to connect to, to, you know, popular CRM systems like Salesforce, Microsoft, and ServiceNow. Uh, and we think about that, that captures a lot of the market because those are some of the biggest phone systems and some of the biggest CRMs uh, out there. And we can help bring those things together, you know, in a time when you might not otherwise be able to do that. Let's talk then about some of the, the big nightmares that Ingenius can help resolve. We talked about absenteeism, improving all of this information, this sort of business intelligence that's at the hand of, of call centers has got to improve just general work life, improve customer satisfaction. What are some other things that, that you know, using Ingenius can help us resolve? Yeah, I mean, certainly those those are important. Uh, the From the agent experience, I mean, again, uh, agents want things to be kind of uh, easy uh, and, and their call center managers want that too. They want the onboarding process to be easy. The training you know, program should be able to be done in a matter of days or weeks, not months or years. Uh, we, we want to be able to, you know, leverage and surface uh, information that's stored within the CRM to help you know, the, those agents solve the customer's problems faster. So, mm -hmm. you know, shorter calls, uh, less repetition, uh, less having to ask for help because we can actually help surface, uh, things, uh, you know, bring up, uh, you know, with the, with some of our, uh, uh, products that we sell at Upland. We have knowledge software, things like that that can bring up knowledge base articles that might be relevant to the particular point in the conversation, things like that. Uh, and then take those things and, and again, shorten that cycle, both for the agents and for the, for the customer. You know, we want higher first call resolution rates. We want shorter call times, uh, because that's going to maximize productivity and, 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 you know, keep customers from having to be on the phone. Um, by providing all of that uh, the data about what's happening in the calls and how long they're taking. Uh, it can improve for call center managers to be able to do better training and coaching to find out which agents need extra help and where at what areas or topics they might be talking about. So if we're collecting results and say, okay, this call was about, um, you know, 
product support for XYZ. Um, and, you know, we find that, you know, a couple of agents um, are really struggling in that area. Maybe we do a little training seminar for product XYZ to try and, you know, close that gap. But we can isolate that and, and bring that to, to four so that we can uh, help those uh, customer call centers uh, be able to do that in a timely fashion. Customers call centers are, are massive organizations. And once you get these things implemented, there's just a lot of the, the mechanical sort of workaday stuff that goes on. But do you get any good stories of uh, integration stories, problem solved from your customers that are that are uh, worth sharing? You know, some of our customers have have implemented things and where we're finding that, you know, we can really add value is bringing voice into a kind of a blended situation with, uh, you know, digital channels, because uh, without being able to kind of bring them together into the same space and, and kind of, you know, uh, correlate uh, the, the different types of channels, uh, it, it really is a different experience. So, you know, you'll have to have agents who are focused, focused solely today on voice interactions and customers who are focused solely on, you know, digital interactions, whether that be chats or cases, emails, uh, you know, SMS, things like that, or maybe even some of the social channels. Um, and so those agents, you know, they, they have to be really focused on one thing or another because there's no blending of that. Um, mm -hmm. And and it might be that, you know, going back to our earlier, um, you know, example, is that if we have our agents completely segregated like that, um, we, we might have a situation where, you know, our, our customer, Jane, uh, calls in for the third, you know, calls in for the first time after 30, you know, digital engagements and the voice agent might not have any history. Maybe, you know, some of the chat agents might have, you know, interacted with Jane a couple of times. Uh, but and so have some familiarity, but because they don't work on voice, now it's going to be a completely different person. And so being able to blend those one makes it so that you know all it, we're kind of channel agnostic. We we don't it doesn't really matter how you want to engage us, whatever's convenient for you and and feels right for you at this time. Uh, and being able to do that in a meaningful uh, way, also wanting to balance the agent workload so that we can you know help the agents not have to try and do multiple things at a time. It might be because, you know, we think of channels as being kind of, uh, you know, active or passive. Uh, things like chats and voice are, are active channels because somebody's on the other end waiting for a response right now. Not like email, kind of like, I'll get back to you in the next couple of days kind of response, but rather I want a response right now. And so we don't want to start trying to blend those things too much because having more than one active channel at a time means somebody's getting ignored. <laughs> Just like if somebody sure. were to start talking to me off to the side right now, I wouldn't be talking to you. Yeah, um, sure. And so, you know, those are the kinds of things that we have to keep in mind. So we help the customers walk through uh, the, you know, setting up their environment so that they can really, you know, maximize that productivity uh, and be able to blend those all seamlessly. Uh, we, we've had customers go in and say that it's, you know, reduced their call times by like 30%, which is fantastic, oh, yeah. um, you know, and be able to, you know, reduce the amount of, and not that anybody wants to reduce the amount of people in a call center when you think about wait times. But if you have enough, you can start to do that and say, okay, well, before it was inefficient. So I needed 20 people to do the job. Now I can do it with 15 because they're so much more efficient. Uh, and, and that's and great still news. increase our first call resolution. That's right. That's right. Yeah, maximize right, right. the first call resolutions, maximize response times. We don't have people waiting on hold for a long time because the calls are faster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if you are on hold, you don't have to wait too long. So that's great. This is uh, wonderful. And, and just, uh, you know, I hope people listening to this are hearing, if not one single thing that's going to trigger them to, to look for more information, but this sort of bouquet of fantastic data points that you've laid out for us. Your, your knowledge of the space is encyclopedic. Uh, Dennis, where would you send people to, if they wanted to learn more about I Ingenious, about the space that we're in here? Yeah, I mean, if we want to learn a little more about Ingenious, and I welcome to do so, is uh, the UplandSoftware.com uh, website. Uh, that's the, a great place to check us out. Also, we're listed on all of the, uh, the popular apps uh, stores for the CRM. So we're on the Salesforce App Exchange. We're on Microsoft App Source and uh, the ServiceNow store as well. So that's uh, definitely a, a place to check us out. Absolutely. And we will put all of the links in the show notes for this very episode. So if you're listening on your very favorite podcast app, 
Uh, just scroll down in the show notes. You'll see links where you can get more information as well. And uh, thank you, uh, Dennis Francoeur, for, for joining me for this conversation. I sure appreciate uh, getting to know your space a little bit better. Thank you so much again for having me. It was great. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We sure appreciate your time and your attention. Uh, don't forget, you can share the show. We'd love it if you share it with a colleague you think might be interested in, in the space that we're in. Or heck, I mean, say you call a call center and you have a lousy experience, forward this to them. We'll see if we can help them out too. Thanks for joining us right here on Connected Knowledge, the podcast from Upland Software.